Hello, this is Mark Homer for Mark My Words. I've got Ian Wormsley here with me, who is an avid Avios, um, frequent flyer miles, hotel miles, car rental miles, general sort of, you know, points collector um, and, and, and friend. And, and, you know, clearly this is something that I'm very interested in. I usually have um, at least two um, trips away with Gemma every year. First on business class, we both go, we go for £600 a seat um, and I've started using uh, miles for hotels as well. I'll talk about that a little bit more shortly. Uh, but Ian, uh, I would say, is more, even more anal with this than I am, <laughs> uh, has probably more routes to make this work. Yeah. Uh, and, um, you know, we're, we're here to, to, to learn some, some more ideas from Ian. So welcome. Thank you. Thank you very much. So Ian, tell us, give us a sort of, how long have you been doing this and give us a broad flavour of what it is you like to do in this space? I like to save money, I think is the root of it all. Um, I've been collecting originally air miles before Avios, so we're going back probably 15 odd years. I I've actually that. been collecting them. Uh, in those days, it was all on pa paper and you used to have to collect them and then send them off to air miles or BA as it was then um, to actually exchange those four flights and in reality in those days it was very much a case of collecting these thousands and thousands of paper air miles um, of which to be honest I never actually used anything when it was on the paper format but since, it, since it's become electronic and it altered its name to Avios a few years ago uh, I've been very active in building my stock of points um, not just with BA but with air other airlines as well um, and I'm very much into being able to fly around the world um, cheaply pl plus also using points. And how many Avios have you got right now or what, is that your biggest thing or are you sort of bigger in something else? Well I've probably got around about a million at the moment That's good, something, isn't it? something like that and obviously I collect via credit cards and everything else which, yeah. which we can go into in a minute. But I, I also enjoy saving cheaply on flights as well. Um, we, my, my wife, Sheldon and I, we often fly to America probably twice a year uh, at least. Um, and business on those class. Business or first. Yeah. Uh, we've got two trips. We're flying to Atlanta over Christmas, yeah. uh, first class, and that will be all on points. Yeah. And we're flying back in February, uh, back to Miami. Um, again, that's first class, but that will be on points. And what as do well. you pay per seat roughly for a return in business or first? It's purely on ta taxes. Yeah. You're paying ta yeah. taxes. Um, so for memory, I think it's around about six hundred pounds. About something, the same as something me. Like that. Yeah, that's my target. That. Sort of six hundred, yeah. six fifty yeah. for a, just paying the taxes and charges, yeah. business or first class return. Long haul, not not you know we're not talking about going to Australia for that no. money, um, but we are talking about going to the Caribbean, the mm -hmm. U.S., uh, Middle East. Y okay. You probably wouldn't get to the Far East, um, you know. Or you'd need you need yeah. more more. Oh, more you money, need really. more. You'd need you more need points need. as well. But the yeah. um, the beauty is that the the taxes, yes, they are stacked higher than normal ta taxes. Unfortunately, BA unfortunately do levy a bit more char charges to the user. But what 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 you're saving against a first class ticket is. Massive, um, huge. Oh, it's a huge amount. Well, I what mean, is a first class seat to Atlanta, oh, roughly? Oh, blind me! You're, you're talking. You can pay five, five, six thousand pounds easily each way. I've seen them at um, yeah between. I've seen them up to seven. I yeah. think return mm -hmm. return flight. Actually, the the one ways can be more than the returns, can't they? One ways are stacked against. It's never cost effective to no. fly anywhere paying a first class. Of oh, sorry, a one way ticket. Yeah, it's actually cheaper. They don't like you to waste your return. Yeah, so one one should never encourage that. But um, a lot of people will buy a return because it's cheaper than a, than a one way ticket. Yeah, it's interesting. Um, there are one or two airlines that don't do that. Norwegian, for example, they they will price air flights on a leg basis. Each sector. Um, yeah. Yes, but they but BA no. Yeah. Okay. So what? Let, let's get into the sort of heart of this now. Mm. So what? What is what, what, for you? 
what do you do most of which card is best where are you earning your points and then what are you using what are you redeeming those points on um, at the it, moment it depends on it depends on I, I probably have more credit cards and cards than most people combined um, so for uh, earning for points I will have a the American Express Platinum card Mm-hmm. Now that's not a cheap card. Um, the annual rate on that has just gone up to five hundred and seventy-five pounds a year. I've noticed that. Yeah. However, I get that back normally every year easily. Yeah. In so I think I've got the value. I've got the one down from that. I've got the gold version, yep. um, which you you what do you earn it's, with it? You earn where we get membership to. reward points yep. on this, don't yep. you? I mean, you so, do on that's the. Um, uh, gold one, yes. That's yeah. the, so you've got the platinum that's version, the platinum which is the upgraded there, version. Which is a full all singing, all dancing card. Yeah. The reason I have this is that you get a lot of benefits outside of just the points. This will earn 1.5, uh, sorry, one, one membership point yeah. per pound you spend. Um, so this will, you can exchange those for flights um on not not only on ba but you can do it for virgin as well you can transfer those points of virgin miles as well um and for hotel stays and stuff like that but the, the good thing about this is that the, the benefits it gives you it gives you very very good travel insurance um you don't have to pay on that car to have that travel insurance you're still covered anywhere in the world you also get good car hire insurance as well so you can decline all the extras for your car yeah. hire insurance, which that that in its alone can cost you an arm and a leg, especially if you get fifteen the extras. pounds a day, twenty yeah. pounds a day. It's, yeah. it, it all builds up. Yeah. Um, so although yes, it's a big amount, um, you also get um, gold uh, membership with uh, Hilton hotels. Yeah. You get gold with Mar- Marriott. Um, so there's half a dozen different hotels that you do get sort of state status with. So you get other benefits as well. Plus, of course, all the benefits. Um, I've just, yes, yes, yesterday I stayed at the Mar- Marriott locally um, and there's a current offer run- running and, and I'll get 50 pounds back on that stay with Mar- Mar- Marriott. Um, they've got one with Hilton at the moment for another 50 pounds. It's excellent, So isn't you it? get those, yes, you pay that yeah. out. But the benefits you get in return yeah. far outweigh the cost. So for me, the, the I, I generally don't use this one for flights um, because I'm very sort of um, well, I'm BA and Virgin centric, and I have cards with both of sure. those two yeah. schemes, mm-hmm. um, which we'll talk about in a, mm-hmm. a little bit. I quite like using this for its flexibility, and you just touched on that. Yeah. Obviously, you could transfer the you know every pound you spend creates one Avios point, which is a British yep. Airways um, air mile. Um, you can transfer them into Virgin, mm-hmm. but I think there's, a, for me, there are sort of other cards which are, you've also got, mm-hmm. which um, I prefer using for that, because I think there's, there's better earning potential. Yep. I've really liked using this for hotels, and I love the big bang for the buck, mm-hmm. uh, because clearly my time's really important. Um, so if I'm gonna sort of do some twists and turns, I wanna be saving thousands and thousands so on this uh, in in more recent years what i've done is i've transferred them into hilton points mm-hmm. um you you can't transfer them uh, sorry you can also transfer them into marriott bonvoy yeah, points yes. um, and what i managed to do with this one is um i've booked a beach villa in the maldives at the waldorf hilton mm-hmm. which is two thousand pounds a night and i've got 10 nights and if you buy Every five nights you get one, one night free, free yep. on, on points. Mm-hmm. So basically I've paid for eight nights, eight nights yep. which was 960,000 um, Hilton points. But uh, effectively, every pound that you spend on here, you I think you get one and a half Hilton points when you transfer. Yep. Um, and I did it at a time when there was a bonus for purchasing more miles as well, um, or sorry, more Hilton points. So I managed to sort of buy the remaining amount. I think I ended up with, I think I had four or 500,000 of these types of uh, membership reward points from spending. And then I bought some Hilton points directly with Hilton. 
and the whole trip cost me two thousand mm-hmm. pounds plus these points instead of ten nights at two grand, yeah. which was twenty thousand. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and because I started this account as a platinum account, mm-hmm. I've also got Hilton uh, Gold membership, which gives me free breakfast, free breakfast. in that that uh, resort. I mean, so, the Hilton which is, is very expensive. Probably yeah. the best uh, hotel scheme for mid-range. So you've got gold and diamonds above that. Yeah. But it's the only chain where you get bre- breakfast included yeah. as as a gold mem- member yeah. on that level. So so for me, in somewhere like the Maldives, you know, for Gemma and I to have breakfast, that's probably another, I don't know, 1,500 quid for, for mm. 10 nights, potentially, because the, the food's so expensive. So um, I love doing it on stuff like that. There's also a JW Marriott resort that's opened recently, which is available on Marriott Bonvoy points, and that's £1,500 a night for an overwater villa. 10 nights is gonna be 15 grand. You can do the same thing. And I I love these when they open initially, these hotels, usually there's a load of availability because they're not filled them up yet. And if you, critically, you you do need to book a long way ahead. And because I always marry it up with um, Avios seats on British Airways or Virgin, uh, you need to book those a year ahead, so I always book the hotel a yep. year ahead, get all the 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 the, the nights on miles. Um, so, yeah, for, for, for me, that's been brilliant. Um, there's also, I think there's a Hilton Resort in New York, which, uh, again, is maybe a thousand pounds a night, mm-hmm. yeah, I, it, it, typically, typically. I mean, we stayed, um, Sheldon and I, last year, we stayed uh, just outside Miami over New Year's Eve. Um, that was that room again was on points, and that room would have cost uh, fifteen hundred pounds per night. Yeah, um, and actually, was it we, a big we, suite or something? Yeah, like we, that? we yeah. were actually upgraded to the yacht, yacht yeah. club, um, and yeah, it's wonderful, you know. But again, it's purely done on points. Uh, sometimes I must admit that we find that. Um, the downside to all this is that people don't actually believe how easy it is to actually do. And they actually think that just because we're flying first class and staying in these nice swanky hotels, we, we, we must be paying a fortune. And the secret is we're not. No. We're, we're paying next to nothing at times for it. We're just playing the game, playing yeah. the system, as I say. Which is why it's so much fun. Yeah. Uh, you're not doing anything wrong, uh, but you're using your brain to find the ways around these schemes. Um, and it, it, actually, if everyone could do it and everyone was doing it, it wouldn't work. Yeah. So, so, I, so there's sort of, it's, I think, it's, I think it's, the it's a weird double-edged we, sword, isn't it? I think the biggest it? advice we yeah. can give today is probably don't do as we're doing because you'll actually, we'll, we, we want to hog it all. <laughs> we, we want to do it all instead, you know. Yeah. No, but I, inevitably, <laughs> most people will, will listen to this and go, oh, it sounds like too much like hard work, but some people will be really tenacious, go at it. And once they get it, once you get it, yeah. it it's actually just a little bit more knowledge to, to read a couple of websites um, and listen to a couple of podcasts every now and again to keep current and to get on to the next thing, which uh, I see a lot of benefit and in. Just ask quest- questions because anybody that flies around the world on points and d- does all this, you know, they're, they're more than happy to share advice and give tips. Yeah, um, it's like a little community. Well, it is a community. Well, we, we do mileage runs, um, which people may have heard of, and we, we do that to gain tier access, tier points with BA. So we're currently gold with BA. And by not actually paying an awful lot of money. So we, we do the same method of flying cheaply. So on those situations, in the most recent months, we've started flights uh, from Sweden quite often. We'll actually start our flights from Sweden. We'll start from Norway, which is absolutely great. Uh, we've done from Ireland. And all, all we do is we, we go and take a flight out to these place, places, spend, spend a night there. Uh, usually on points to get out there. And then we've picked up cheap tickets from those c- countries to the US, for example. Um, and all, all we're doing, we're just flying back to the UK, back to Heathrow, and either overnight in there, depends on timings, or, or we'll just jump on the tran- transatlantic plane. Again, probably in, uh, at least in business, if not in first class. And we are saving a shed load of money on that, but we're buying regular tickets. So of course we're earning the points, the Avios points by normal, but we're also getting 
um, our status up as well. This just sounds so unenvironmentally friendly, Ian. I mean, <laughs> I, 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 I noticed there was a report commissioned by a, a university in London for the government from, yes. uh, two, three weeks ago, yes. which basically said that uh, frequent flyer miles should be banned because of these mileage runs, but there which, was, which, which actually is a small part of it. You well, know, actually, we, this, this actual report, um, the actual flying part of it, was probably about one one hundredth of the report, mm. um, and it was such a small seg segment. Yeah. But of course, the media's picked they it all it. up, yeah. and that, um, yeah. Okay, so um, you we we use these for slightly mm -hmm. different reasons. Obviously, we're getting a lot of information on what the late, you know, where the latest offer is, or how to get extra miles, or you know, if we're going to buy some miles when the offer starts and finishes. Where do you pick a lot of that up from? Um, I use a number of resources, um, so I've got various watches that I have um, out there. So I have various websites that I will I will use. Uh, some of them aren't. I must admit, some of them are sort of more sort of mem membership type resources which I use. But there are there's a plethora of, of sites that I do pick up the information from. Gen general blogs is very yeah. good. Um, quite often, I will read blogs that are not actually English. So, for example, some of the the bargains that I pick up in certain parts of the world may may be on a German blog or mm. maybe on things. So, I actually you do go into Google Translate. Go into Google tra Translate. Mm. Um, but I also have um, you can monitor web web websites yeah. uh, very easily by using third party sites. Um, so if anything flags up, I'll automatically get get an email. Yeah. So that's probably my other geekiness yeah. <laughs> that I sort of have that yeah. that do it. But it's it isn't hard to find out um, the information. There's a site called Jack's um, Travel Club, something along those yeah. names, and they 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 send out regular alerts on yeah. fares and stuff like this. I, I go on Head for Points Head quite for points, a lot. Yes. Um, you know, that, that would be my favourite. Head for Points is a UK-based um, site which focuses on uh, frequent flyer miles mm -hmm. and hotels and, and car hire and all that sort of stuff. Um, and whilst most of the articles are not relevant to me because I'm just looking at the sort of big bang for the buck stuff, mm -hmm. I, I don't want to save 20 quid, I want to save 20,000 on a trip or whatever. Um, you know, it's... It, 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 that stuff is in there as well. And I, I, I read that almost. I'll have a quick flick every day when I'm, you know, but I find it interesting. And you, you sort of got to love this as well, haven't you? Because yeah. if you don't, it's not really going to work. I, I think, you know, from because you know, Mark, I'm very much into my planning as well. And but the problem is that a lot of websites, the information can, can get out of date very quickly. Yeah. So it's always important to keep on top of these things and yeah. just check them for yourself. So, um, the next card, which it looks like uh, we've both got, uh, is the British Airways um, uh, Platinum Plus. Premium Plus. Premium Plus. Premium Plus. BAPP. Uh, yeah, the BAP card, yeah. uh, which um, only generates Avios, British Airways Avios, uh, and you earn at uh, 1. a rate 5. of 1.5 Avios yeah. per pound that you spend. Uh, which is very good. Uh, the biggest benefit of this card is the fact that you get a companion voucher issued every year. Uh, you've got to spend £10,000 you get a companion voucher. Um, the companion voucher is huge mm -hmm. because basically it allows you to take two people return on a long haul trip um, for the miles of one person mm -hmm. so you get two for the price of one you still have to pay double taxes and charges so instead of it being 600 650 pounds you are paying 1250 or, or whatever because you're putting two people return but you only have to you basically pay half as many miles if you use that companion voucher um, so i have a card running in my name and i spend on that um, and my wife Gemma has a card in her name uh, and i have a secondary card holder card mm -hmm. on her account. So I'm spending on her account as well. I manage it all and pay the direct debit. <laughs> um, and um, the, uh, so we get two companion vouchers every year. So that's what allows us to go long haul, uh, two trips a year, both of us, 
uh, for well probably about three hundred thousand in 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 first class on all of those trips. So you're effectively getting four returns okay. in, in 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 business or first class. So you know I think that's the most valuable card that anyone can have. And if you want one for long term spending, yeah. I think the British Airways Premium Plus is the one. It's a good one to start with. And again, yeah. we we also have that. that's why I've got two cards here. One is mine. One is my wife's or companion secondary card for my wife's. Um, and yes, we'll, we will get those. And this year, we're, we're on both our trips to the States, this win winter, we're, we're actually you using the companion vouchers. Yeah. And it does make a big saving in the points. It, it massive. And, and the other big benefit, clearly, uh, with using British Airways and Virgin, is they're usually direct, well, they are direct flights, yep. unless you're going to Sydney. Um, you know, they're, they're almost all direct flights. Yep. If you sort of, Emirates is not as good in terms of your ability to earn and, and redeem. Uh, and and almost all the other airlines are not as good. Um, but in addition, they're not direct. Um, nice. And for me, you know, that's quite a big thing. I want to direct fly. I don't want to do extra legs and all that sort of stuff. My wife will start kicking off and, you know. It, well, if you've got yeah. Emirates, one thing, if you do earn on Emirates, um, we had some points on there from a flight, never going to use them. The on those we exchange exchange those for Heathrow reward points so um, what do you do with those so uh, Heathrow reward points you can use those um, against shopping yeah at Heathrow so if we're flying elsewhere we'll, we'll use them so we always stock up on aftershave stuff like that per perfume for the wife that's that sort of stuff um, or for what watches jewelry whatever you want at Heathrow because you're paying tax-free prices, of course, than Heathrow. So the actual exchange rate you get from Emirates to the Heathrow reward points is it's good. It's actually pretty good. Well, that's interesting. Um, yeah. I mean, I, I haven't really gone down the Emirates road. I did with Etihad for a while um, because I quite like doing things which uh, I like new experiences and um, I don't like paying for it, but I always want to push the boundary and try uber luxury stuff mm -hmm. so that when I'm back doing normal stuff, I, I can sort of relate and work out, well, that's not worth it, that's not worth it, but actually that's pretty good. So Gemma and I took a, a trip on Etihad in their apartment, first oh, apartment, right. yes, nice. which um, has a separate bed and a separate seat for each apartment. We had one each. And, and then they had an interconnecting um, sort of door, and that's on the A380, the big sort yeah. of super jumbo. Yeah. So that was cool, and I think that cost us 500 quid each. Um, I did sort of one way on that and ended up with a load of other points. So th those two are sort of the main cards that I use. Um, I also have a HSBC card, which is good for visa spending. Um, and that, that, that is great. You know, if you if merchants don't take American Express, so I like that card for that. But you do need to sort of meet some criteria to get that yeah. card. I use a Virgin, so I, I have Virgin a Virgin credit card for that purpose. So I, I own I own my Vir Virgin points on the Virgin one. For yeah, the, it's the same. Yeah. Same principle. So um, I also have the um, Virgin credit card, um, and you the, it, it's actually for Visa spend. It's the highest um, sort of earning multiple because you get one and a half uh, Virgin, Virgin Flyer miles for every pound that you spend, mm -hmm. and it counts. You know, it's a Visa card, yeah. so it's accepted everywhere. So I also have one of those, and I like that because you can also transfer those Virgin miles into Hilton. Uh, Hilton points um, well, Hilton yes. points. You, yeah. you could do Marriott Bonvoy, but they've mm -hmm. stopped that. Uh, and of course, you can you can use Virgin. You know, yeah. you don't have a companion voucher, mm -hmm. but you can fly Virgin. Um, not as many locations, but they are direct flights. Um, so I like that card as well. Well, Virgin uh, Virgin is very useful. It's going to become more more useful going forward because um, Virgin is currently owned forty nine percent by Del Delta. Yeah. So you get the benefits there with Delta. However, um, KLM Air France are buying 20% of Virgin's remaining 49%, which will uh, bring, bring them into a fold. And what, the, what they're actually setting up is a joint venture across the Atlantic. So, so you'll be able to earn Virgin points on KLM, Delta, 
Air France and obviously on Virgin themselves um, to go across the pond um, on the four airlines pretty much in the same way as you get on uh, with American Airlines, BA, um, Iberia already on on a different alliance. Yeah, so w which is clearly going to be really, really beneficial. Mm -hmm. um, so biggest things for me, biggest, you know, if you're going to get started, I think that's the card, the British Airways mm -hmm. Premium Plus. Don't get the light blue color card because no. the companion voucher is only valid for 12 months. And it's 20,000 pounds. The biggest thing with this is, and, and you need to spend 20,000 quid to get the companion voucher yep. where it's only 10 with this. Yep. The biggest thing with this is that people don't do and they tell me all the time, oh, it doesn't work because I can't ever find the flights. You need to book a year ahead. Yeah. If you book a year ahead and, you know, sometimes at midnight, 355 days it is ahead, um, you'll get pretty much what you want. I'm just looking at Barbados for a year ahead at the moment. First class is coming out, six seats a day. I'm monitoring it. Uh, I'm, I'm trying to get my whole family, uh, you know, there are, you know, four of us, five of us in first. I think I'm going to be able to do it. Um, using two companion vouchers um, and you know I, I, I will always try I'll, I, I'll probably I can see how they're getting used up because I'm looking every morning um, I suspect I'll be able to just book it at 7 or 8 a.m. but if they're really really in demand and not many seats available like say the Maldives they, they always release two business class seats on every flight you've always got that uh, but the Maldives ones are probably gone at five minutes past midnight because there's not many flights going there uh, and everybody wants them. So if you book a year ahead, you'll get them usually. You have, you will always get um, two in business class uh, because uh, they have to release two in business class. Um, and lots of people say to me, yeah, but I don't know if I'm, what dates I'm going to want to go in a year. And... In addition, what happens if you want to cancel it? Well, if you want to cancel, it just costs you £50 a person. You get all the avils back and all the rest of the money that you spent. Um, and I find you don't end up cancelling that money because you, you put all your holidays in a year ahead and you can build everything else around yeah. that. Um, so I just, I, I think, I really do think it's the way forward. Um, and, um, you know, I've been doing this since, I think, 2010, I started earning Avios. I was a little bit um, <laughs> after Ian. Um, and um, yeah, now as of as of, as of right now, um, Avios wise, I, I've become a I'm, I'm sort of quite Avios centric. Um, but I'm well, on Tuesday, once the rest of my Avios on the card drop through, I'll have 2.2 million yep. Avios in my account. I've got 2.14 million yep. in there now. Uh, I absolutely love it and I, I really do think it's the way forward. If you don't have loads of spend on, you know, your your, your credit card, um, you know, because you do need to have, you know, a, a reasonable amount of spend, some people get involved in um, sort of churning cards. Now, American Express have clamped down on it a little bit, but you can go and get the Platinum card, um, spend two or 3,000 on it, you know, when there's an offer on, get 30 or 40,000 membership reward points, Refer another family member that you know you probably get nine, ten, nine, ten, fifteen thousand for the referral. Then do a similar amount of spending on their card, get thirty, forty thousand um, membership reward points. Then do the same to another family. I used to do that in rounds of four with my wife, my mum, and my stepfather. And um, you can do that every twenty-four months and still get the uh, points. So just a little round robin like that can. It can easily earn you over 100,000, 150,000, some, sometimes 200,000 points um, if you really organise. And when you cancel the card, you get a pro rata refund of the fee. Um, if you've got a small business, you can also get the platinum card for small business. Um, and I think the they're running a deal on that at the moment. I think it's 50,000 mm -hmm. bonus, something like that. And it's you only have to wait. Bonus, you only, bonus yeah, you only have to wait six months before you, you know, you can do that again and, and earn the bonus again. So lots of people are opening those and closing those. Um, so that can be something for people who aren't spending quite so much on the cards and um, but, but are organised. Also with the, the BAPP card, uh, you actually get three points per pound you spend spend with BA. With British Airways. So yeah. if you're actually buying you're paying your tax ta taxes for your flights as well, where well, you're going to get sort of you know, double the amount of points back yeah. on those at least. Yeah, so for two people spending sort of twelve hundred pounds, 
you can you can often you you get four or five thousand yeah. avios from mm. each, each, you know from yeah. each sort of trip that you book with British Airways uh, worth having. But I mean, you just try and push as much as you can via your credit cards. Yeah. On what whatever you're doing, um, bill hop. That's a good one. Yes, although you 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 will incur sort of fees, sort of two three percent fees. That, yes. Yeah. So bill hop is something where you know maybe you're paying HMRC or somebody else. You can pay via a bank transfer, and it'll take the money off your card. So if you just want to meet the ten thousand um, spend to get your companion voucher, that can be really good. Well, if you're doing your HMRC, then of course I noticed that you had it in your in your wallet, um, and that's the Curve card. Yes. Now the Curve card is a, a debit card. It's a Mastercard debit card. Um, so where credit cards are not accepted um, and debit cards are, you can use the Curve card, and you can then recharge those payments to a Visa or MasterCard. Exactly. Um, unfortunately, they were going to do the Amex, and they, they did launch the Amex, but uh, American Express stopped, stopped them within yeah. about a week, so yeah. it didn't go very far. So, But I recharged this to, um, I've, got a, I've got a Hilton Visa. And oh, I've your Virgin a, Visa. I do it to my Virgin Visa. Mm, um, that's what I've been doing with this. And the great thing is that, as a general rule, you'll pay zero foreign exchange fees abroad. Mm. So anything that I pay from pay, pay, PayPal um, in foreign current, currency during the month, then that just comes off of that card and recharges to the to the Visa card. Um, and the good thing about the curve is you can actually go back in time. Yeah. So if you charge it to the wrong card, uh, you can recharge it to a different Visa or MasterCard as you wish. Yeah. Um, I, I, I love this curve because um, I, I would recharge mainly to the Virgin Visa. Um, and what it allows you to do, as you said, is it, it, the, the, the recipient or the PDQ machine or when you're online spending money, those systems see this card as a debit card. Mm -hmm. So you can go on the HMRC website, you can pay VAT, you can pay corporation tax, you can pay income tax all through this MasterCard, which then recharges to the, the Virgin mm -hmm. Visa or you know any, any Visa or MasterCard. Uh, I've got a HSBC, uh, HSBC, is it Visa or Master HSBC MasterCard, um, and you just mentioned you're recharging onto your Hilton I've got a Hilton, card. although you can't get that yeah. now, but it's, they've stopped it, but that's a Barclay card, and that gets Hilton points so, or onto any other Visa or MasterCard. So lots of people are spending a lot uh, of, you know, they're, they're, they're sending HMRC a lot of money in, in tax, maybe VAT or whatever. You can earn points on that if you're then, if you've got a Visa or MasterCard, um, you know, card to sort of recharge it through to. So big benefit there. I like that a lot. Mm. Yeah. So Ian, a anything else that people should be aware of to, you know, push this, this sort of frequent flyer points-based uh, I don't know. It's, it's a shimmy, isn't it? I don't know, a shimmy, but it's it's certainly <laughs> it's certainly an enjoyable hobby. Um, I don't like paying more than I have to in any hotel. Um, I'm not. I'm never going to make any ho hotelier rich anywhere in the world. I'm afraid uh, because I do so much on points, and I will save the bargains where I can. Uh, because we enjoy traveling and if you enjoy traveling around this one wonderful world we live in then might as well make it pay you rather than rather than you aligning in the pockets of somebody else yeah so we don't mind starting our hot trips in in Stavanger or w whatever parts because we're going to enjoy those cities as well we enjoy those cities it's we we make our flights part of the journey part of the holiday we don't think about our holidays beginning when we arrive at the des destination. Our holidays actually start in the lounge of the airport. Uh, so effectively, when you're going, I don't know, from Stavanger or, or somewhere like that, mm -hmm. or I don't know, there's Oslo, and there's, yeah. often it's these Scandinavian Scandin starts. Scandinavia you... quite often is targeted by airlines 
um, as a cheap start point. As a start, yes, because they will they will sell tickets cheaper in certain countries and certain markets, yeah. as opposed to other places. So, so to be clear, you're you're starting a journey in uh, a Scandinavian country mm -hmm. that's on offer. Yeah. You're not using points. You're usually paying the 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 cash. Yep. Fair, but it is very much discounted because oh, there's less demand from those discounted, start points. Yes. And but the benefit of doing that is you, you're paying a little bit more cash, but you earn um, points and tier points, tier points. Um, because you've actually paid cash for the flight rather than redeeming yep. points. Um, and those tier points then lift you up into silver or gold status mm -hmm. with BA or, or, or another yeah. airline, which then means you get the lounges regardless of what class you're flying yeah, on. Totally. So it's a different strategy. It's a different stra strategy and it's one we enjoy because, I mean, for example, when we flew to LA and we joined uh, yourself and Rob on a VIP holiday a couple of years or so ago, uh, we began that trip in Sweden um, and we flew first class from um, from the UK across to um, LA. Oh, so you paid for your first class seat? Yeah. How much was it? Um, we actually roughly well, we saved. I think that was just under fifteen hundred pounds. You paid per person. Yeah, per which person. Which which would easily have been five grand. You imagine? Oh, it was. It, we saved six and a half thousand pounds on the equivalent first class per, seat. Per person? Uh, yes, per person. Yeah, and yeah. we actually paid less than first, obviously less than business, less yeah. than premium economy, yeah. and a bit more than economy yeah. on and, that direct flight. And you'll have earned massive tier points because it's a first class big, seat. Big what airline thing. was it? Was it uh, One was, World? Uh, no, yes, American. it was on One, one World. It was, no, it was on BA. BA. So, BA. I mean, did the, those points alone would take you up to bronze or silver or something, yeah. wouldn't they? I mean, the... Um, Quite often, uh, silver is 640 points, I believe, off memory. Or was it 460? It's one or the other. Yeah. Um, and it's quite easy to actually earn those um, to get silver just by doing a couple of hops. Yeah. Um, so essentially there, you've, you've started somewhere you know in in in, in, in scandinavia somewhere, yes. uh, you've uh, i don't know if you've got a direct flight to la from mm, there. from heathrow yeah so we've we've so you've come back, come back to heathrow, come back to heathrow. You so you, you've that. added sort of two extra flights yeah. on paid for those yep. um but on points on points yeah on points i'm not but actually paying for those flights to cash so we're flying we're flying we're paying on points from the flight take say yeah. to sweden um, then getting a flight back from Sweden back to yeah. Heathrow, yeah. and then Heathrow direct to the US. Okay. So we've been talking about long haul flights. Um, we just touched on the European thing. Mm -hmm. um, this also works certainly with BA, I think, really well around Europe. Um, you know, I, I tend to try and do two long hauls and at least one, maybe two European. Mm -hmm trips in our summer every year. Maybe I go to Mallorca or the south of France or wherever. Um, and I use the British Airways um, Avio system. Usually Gemma and I go, we go business class and oh, we probably spend 50, 60 pounds for the two of us um, and some Avios, maybe 60,000 Avios, something like that, uh, which is cheap as chips. Clearly, you know, we're going to Heathrow. There are sort of closer airports, but um, you get way more baggage allowance. We're now flying with a child. Um, so I think we get three bags each, plus yeah. all of his stuff, yeah. plus all of the, um, you know, the pram and everything else. They're much friendlier on board. Um, if you go on Ryanair or EasyJet, Easy I find it's always four or 500 pounds yeah. per person. Uh, sorry, for, for, for a couple. So mm -hmm. you end up paying 500 quid instead of 60 quid. You end up paying a lot more. Way more. It's, it's a lot of these other airlines are deemed as sort of the more Low economical yes, yeah. uh, service, but it's all the additional things you yeah. need to add on. So, you know, for example, if you've got a, if you get a, a business seat to Europe on BA on points, um, you're going to get, get your lounge. Mm. And if you just think how much you might spend at Heathrow or Gatwick, you know, just getting a burger, a couple of sodas, drinks, whatever, it all adds up, and of course, all those costs need need to be factors into your, your airfare. It's yeah. all extras on top. It is, and um, you know, I, I um, you don't, you, I wouldn't use a companion voucher around no. Europe. Um, Although, I, having said that, 
um, I think it sometimes it might be worth looking at summer times for business. So rather than wasting the voucher, then yes, perhaps look on the business flights. Um, it's worth mentioning, just backtracking slightly there, is when you're using Avios, I wouldn't use Avios on a long haul economy flight. Uh, because the value not tends worth not to be it? worth it. No, it's no. only really worth it for business or first class. Premium? Uh, premium Sometimes. maybe. I don't tend I've to, done I'll, the odd one. Yeah. What, what, what I do with that, I've, I've got a Maldives trip coming up mm -hmm. in March. We've managed to, because of obviously BA's in one world, mm. you, can, you can book seats on Qatar Airways mm. and Qantas, Qantas. And we're going Qatar to, sorry, we're going British Airways first to mm. Qatar and mm. then we're using Qatar Airlines uh, onto the Maldives in their Q suites, right. which are yes. these suites that, that sit together. You can't yes. use a companion voucher with that. No. But on the way back, I did manage to get a direct flight with BA, but for some reason, they weren't releasing business class, even at one minute past mm. midnight. Uh, and remember, during the summer, that's 1 a.m. because British yep. summertime comes in. Um, and actually, we only managed to get premium economy. But the big thing for me is if it's a day flight, Premium's almost as good as business class. Mm -hmm. Business class is, or Club World as, as it's known in British Airways, is of real benefit when it's a night flight and you want to sleep because you get a bed. Yeah, yeah, totally. I think for Europe, um, for just 4,000 Avios, you can get an economy flight, say to Amsterdam, Paris. Yeah. So those short, shorter flights. Now, certain but, times of the year, for example, um, going down to um, Nice, um, when the um, property Mepim. Mepim is on, yes, um, those seats can be ridiculous prices, but you can normally pick up yeah, Avios of flights on those. So instead of paying £600 for an economy flight on some of those really busy routes, you can still get your, your Avios. Um, and uh, it's not, it, they, they don't double the price. The other time to look if you miss out is is last minute. So quite often it's BA, hours BA will will release um, the closer you get to flights. They just BA dump will, them, don't they? Will actually release yeah. flights. I mean, at the moment, reason we picked up flights for this Christmas and we only booked those a couple of months ago was because BA released a whole load of first and business class avios or seats. To, to the US. And we're, we're how long before was that? Um, well, we booked those two months and we're going at Christmas. Okay, so um, two months before they yeah. dumped a load more yeah. in. So we saw, yeah. but you know, we can certainly. Yeah. Um, I mean, I noticed when uh, the, the BA pilots were striking, mm -hmm. um, there were loads of reward seats coming mm -hmm. on because their bookings went yeah. down. No. Um, and clearly now the threat of strikes, it just seems to have gone away, doesn't yeah. it? Fizzled, so, fizz, yeah. fizzled out. Fizzled now. away. We, well, it was you know, good, really. Yeah. But. I think they beat them. <laughs> <laughs> I, do, I just think, I mean, God, the captains are on 160 grand a year. If they don't like it, go and work for Ryanair. No. I mean, I'm sure they're... Yeah. You know, <laughs> yeah. 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 It's, you know, but you have to keep your eye on the ball. Um, yeah. And don't just think that it's, you know, you and I are both involved in property and, you know, never assume that something is gone until yeah. that flight is taken off. Yeah. You just keep, keep checking. Keep going, you, yeah. You don't know when there's... That's when actually, that's the biggest thing. I, I have the BA app on mm -hmm. my phone and seriously, I'll probably, I'll probably look at what Avios availability there is. Um, at the moment, clearly, I'm looking to book for next year. I'm, I'm going to be booking in about three weeks. I'll probably check that once a day. Yeah. And, it, okay, it is a bit of fun to me. But if you are looking, you know, just once a day, it probably takes three minutes mm -hmm. uh, on your phone, it becomes so obvious what the pattern is at that time. Mm -hmm. And then it shows you what you are and you're not going to be able to book when, you know, your window opens up for, mm -hmm. for, for the period that you want to go in. Um, that's actually taught me the most, yeah. I think. There's yeah. also a site called BA Seat Finder, uh, which is a very useful site, um, and that trawls the back engine uh, for all the Avios seats availability on BA around the world. And actually, that that is an easier site to look at uh, for actually looking up availability of of seats for BA. Um, so I tend to use that site quite often. Um, it's a free site, although you can pay a little bit per month for alerts as well. Um, but just to look it up man manually, it's a lot easier than looking on a BA site. 
Um, I, I also like, um, there's a little app I use quite a lot called Award Wallet. Award Wallet, totally. Yeah, which um, allows you to, what it does, it drags all of the information from all the schemes that you're involved in into yeah. one place and displays how many points you've got and critically the expiry dates of any points. Yeah. Um, so it's a lot easier to manage it with things yeah. like that. It's always worth in that one to use use the, the professional version, so pay a little bit per, per year for it because it will send you alerts if your points are about to expire, yeah. they will send you alerts to tell you that your points. But we, we have all our points from all the various hotel schemes from the cruise lines to different airlines to whatever. Um, the one thing that we always do whenever we're staying in a hotel is we will always aim to book direct with the hotel and we will always aim to have the membership scheme for that hotel, mm. even if that's the only time we're yeah. going to stay there because they will often give upgrades yeah. and they will to, those people to those people who book direct. Book direct because they're not paying commission yeah. to the third party sites yeah. and if they're paying 10 20 percent commission yeah they're 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 thinking that as wasted profits yeah. and they're much likely to give you the benefits um if you're a member of reward scheme, reward scheme and you book direct and it comes up on their yeah. computer and says yeah. you yeah. know mark homie and Wumsey yeah. are members here yeah. and they'll say oh yes welcome back or mm. glad to see your mem member yeah. here and you know it doesn't matter the fact that you're never really going to go there again. Use, their, use yeah. it again. Um, but quite often you can get status matches. So, for example, with um, because we've got status with Hilton through the credit card, then um, I was able to status match that to um, MGM Resorts in Las Vegas. And because we then got status with the hotel there with state with the status match, we were able to get a free valet parking, um, and we were able to get an upgrade, and we got the lounge in the hotel, all because we had a certain level of status with that hotel, having never stayed with them again, and we just did a status match. I've recently done that to the IHG group, and we're now Spar Elite with them, um, and again, that's purely because of, I was able to match from my my Hilton state status, which I got from the credit card. So all these, it's worth doing. It's all these steps. Yeah. yeah, you have to jump through a few hoops. But when you're sitting in your in your nice suite or whatever you're sitting in, thinking I'm not paying the same rate as them next door, um, you you sit there with a bit of sort of smile on your face. You look at the scene outside. You, you perhaps you might go to the lounge. That it's the fun, hotel isn't it? has. That's have, why I have, do it. Have a gin and tonic yeah. or whatever else you drink. Yeah. Relax, thinking, hmm, I'm not paying for this. Yeah. You know, thank you, BA. Thank you, Virgin. <laughs> thank you, Waldorf Astoria. Indeed. Yeah. Indeed. <laughs> okay, Ian. Um, I. 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 Um, Okay, Ian, thank you for all of your insights. Um, thank I've, you for having I've, me. I've, uh, I've found it interesting. I always learn a few tidbits from you every time we speak, which is, uh, <laughs> is, is, is appreciated. Um, so where do people find more out about you? Because you, you don't just uh, get involved with Avios and these types of schemes. You're actually involved in some good-sized property schemes, aren't you, where you're, you're developing buildings, you're converting them. Mm -hmm. how, how can people learn, learn more about Ian? Well, it depends what which which hat I'm wearing, or more like likely which which pair of sunglasses I'm wearing. To be honest, I I have different colour sunglasses for different things. So, the sunglasses I'm wearing today, for those who are listening, are sort of a, a sort of a bluish sort of colour, which are my travel geek uh, sunglasses. Um, for my planning, I have red ones, and I'm known 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 as a planning geek. And but for my other stuff, I wear black, and that is for my property business, which is leading homes. And we develop predominantly in the southwest, but expanding out now, um, and have some fairly large sites. Um, we've got development of fifty odd flats down in Devon. Uh, we've got a few others in leg leg legals at the time of recording, and we're expanding that far and wide. But. I am probably one of the easiest people to find on social media. I'm on all the various platforms. Just look me up, Ian Wormsley, um, or just, mm. I mean, I even have a domain, ianwormsley.com. So, you know, 
easy to find um, and yes I'm, I'm always around in the prop property and other circles. Ian thank you very much no, thank you appreciate it greatly that has been Mark Homer for Mark My Words. <laughs>